again, everybody. Out here, uh, the Silverado. It's running great, by the way. Uh, no major problems, I can tell. Now, I did have one problem I fixed. Uh, when I took the fuel tank out, I forgot that there's a float down in there for some reason. That I don't know. Uh, I forgot about the float. And when you take the fuel pump and all that out, you're supposed to very carefully, when you get to where the float is, you're supposed to pull it up sideways and pull the float out gently. I don't know what I was thinking. I just kind of forgot about it. I just took the pump out and I didn't really remember it until I heard the snap and I broke the sending unit. So for the first week, I've drove with no sending unit in the tank, so it's it's told me low fuel, but I filled it up, so I knew it had some. I've since fixed that. It's easy. I just got a replacement one. But anyway, oh yeah. Also, one more thing that I did is it's not exactly right, but I've got a back bumper on there now, so we at least have a bumper let me get down here. So we at least have a bumper, even though it's not uh, exactly the bumper that would have came on the truck. It's still, it don't look too bad. Anyway, <laughs> just, just kind of a little update. Um, so far I do like the truck. Now one thing, uh, these rims, well, let me turn the camera around and show you. Okay, these rims. Um, actually, well, yeah, you can see it. There is a lot of rust on them. And what that rust does is it throws them out of balance. And there's like pieces of it falling off. I'm going to probably get some more rims for it. Um, I would like to get some just regular steel rims without this uh, this chrome you can see how thin this little piece of metal is that's the decorative part I'd like to just get regular steel wheels and put on it maybe some uh, spoked rims or something I'm not sure I don't really want aluminum uh, because of living up in the creek it's really not good for it you know if you get against a rock or whatever but eh, you can see there's a little rust around on the inside and the problem is you really can't hardly get to this rust and also dirt mud and all that kind of stuff gets stuck in there you can see it does have wheel weights on it but there is a shimmy that I get when I'm driving uh, at slow speeds it doesn't shake and when I get to higher speeds, it does. So what I'm really wanting to do is, uh, until I can get some more rims, I'd like to have a way of balancing these. See, there's a little piece missing off of this one. See? Yeah. These rims are rusty too, so I'm going to replace them. But until then... Um, I want to have it in balance and since these rims are continually kind of changing because of the rust I need some sort of dynamic balance that changes with the rim I guess you'd say <laughs> oh yeah I got my exhaust um, when I welded it on it kind of dropped and I wasn't paying attention so it's pretty low I figure at some point I'll hit something with it either rip it off or bend it up <laughs> But it sounds pretty good. I've got this over here. And this is what I'm going to try to balance my wheels with. I've seen some videos on it. This is antifreeze. And uh, it's already pre-diluted, so it's already uh, the right mixture. Now, I'm going to put that in my tires. And I'm going to try and see if that will balance it. Uh, Basically, the antifreeze will, you know, when you take off, the, the antifreeze will distribute itself evenly around the tire. 
and when the tire starts shaking it will automatically as it shakes up the um, the antifreeze will pull in the lighter spot so it will pull the tire back the other way you know it, it will automatically balance itself um, that's what I've heard anyway I've never tried this before but I figure since I'm replacing the rims anyway and I'm gonna be breaking these tires down it'd be worth a try just so I can learn something and uh, you know maybe get a little bit longer of not shaking because it does it shakes pretty good all right let's see now what you want to do you can see under here I've got a jack put under here and what I'm going to do I'm going to let the air out I'm going to take this cap off right here I've got this that I am going to take this out with Okay, so you can see the tire has the air out of it. There's no more pressure left. I have taken a piece of fuel line and hooked it to the valve stem. It just kind of screwed onto it. Just fits pretty good. And this I'm going to put in. I got a cup of antifreeze here. Put the Clear hose would probably be more entertaining because you can actually see what's going on easier. But this one should work. It just needs to draw it up. Okay. All right. So what I want to do, I'm going to go under the truck and I am going to jack it up. And when I jack it up, and the tire straightens out where it doesn't have the bulge it will start drawing air in and it's going to be trying to draw air but instead it's going to be drawing the antifreeze into the tire that way it will put the antifreeze in the tire without having to try to funnel it in or something so let's try this and see how it works. Like I said, I've never done this before, but I have seen videos on it, so we're gonna try it. Can you see it going? Look here. The level in there is dropping. It is actually sucking the antifreeze into the fuel line into the tire. Look at that. <laughs> Get to the last drop. All right, that whole cup is in the tire now. Let this go up for a minute to just kind of make sure. And we will remove our hose. Put our valve stem back in. And then pump the tire. All right, so that's got all four of them with antifreeze in them inside the tires. Antifreeze, like you put in the engine. Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> hey, I've heard people say that it works. Scientifically, it makes sense. Um, I have also read some stuff where people were concerned about maybe the um, antifreeze, maybe eating the rubber on the inside of the tire up. Well, 
you got to think of what your radiator hoses are made of. They're made of rubber. And they last for years and years. So I don't think that antifreeze is going to hurt your tires. Anyway, it, it, it also has corrosion inhibitors to keep it from rusting more on the inside. The outside, it's too late. <laughs> They're very rusty. Um, I think they'll hold together, but... Uh, they're going to be almost impossible to keep balance. So this is the only way that I can keep any balance to them. Better balance beads. I'm going to try this first because I had some antifreeze already. So, and I like to learn stuff anyway. I know it would be, I know it would take breaking them down to get it back out. But let's go for a ride and just see if it still shakes or if this has fixed it. Okay, well here we are. Get her started up. Get the defroster going. Uh, air conditioner too. And with this phone mount, it very easily shakes. <laughs> so if there is any shaking going on, y'all be the first to know. <laughs> well, are you ready? Hang on. Of course, you're going to have some shaking. We're going out of the creek, down the driveway, and out of the creek. So, I can't get any wider of a shot because the phone mount's right there. I would have to mount it way up. Yeah. I think I'm going to stop it while we're going through the creek because it's going to be shaking all over the place anyway. reach the main road here and this is what will tell the story get up here get took off stabilized the mount a little bit better. So, give this another try. I 
there's some shaking, but not really. Just a uh, just a second, and then it'll get right back in. But other than that, it's smooth. I think it's I think that's good. All right. Well, I guess that's gonna be my little video today. I'm happy with that. I guess we're just going to drive around a little bit, enjoy our smooth ride for a change. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one.